Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up, and you're going to love it. Somebody wrote that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. I'm telling you, uh, this is going to be one of those shows that I just absolutely love doing. And I hope that everybody out here enjoys it as well. Because sometimes you have to make a video and you feel like you know it's the right time to make it. And today's that day for me. So let's get into this thing. First of all, we're looking at $2.4 trillion market cap for crypto. And even though the market is off by 1.5%, we know that the sentiment and the winds are in the crypto industry sales. Don't forget that as we move through this material. Bitcoin, 65500 plus right now, 2600 plus for Ethereum, $119 billion plus market cap for Tether, USDC, $36 billion plus. And XRP at the number seven spot is $0.61, cents, ladies and gentlemen. 5.3 in the right direction in the 24 hour, okay? 5.3% in the last 24 hours. We're liking where this is going. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, told you this is the kind of video I like to make here. And we see XRP now at 62 cents on Fiat Link. And you can see that 5 plus percent gains right there. And things are flying off the shelf, ladies and gentlemen. But let's get into some information. And I want to put this together today because I've heard a, a couple narratives kind of resurface. And it's almost as if like some of these bad actors out here who just won't leave the space because they know that's where the views are. But they want to talk negatively and try to deter others on how positive they feel about what they're seeing. Well, let's try to set the record a little more clear today, right? And what I want to talk about is the fact that you know, obviously we don't have legislation and obviously XRP is designed as a bridge currency to work inside of the financial system. So until there are stable coins launched in mass, not only to represent and be pegged to dollars around the world, but also to be pegged to commodities, you know, stable coins can represent oil and gold and wheat and soy, whether it's hard or soft commodities. What I'm interested in is explaining it in a way that even if somebody's fairly new in the system and they understand macro things, let's just understand that none of this is going to take off for XRP as a bridge currency in the manner that we've all discussed and come to understand its full intended use, which could drive XRP, according to the Arthur Brittos of the world, you know, into five digits, right? Because it's built to serve the planet and everyone on the planet. And what an amazing idea that is. And as we move through this information today, I'm asking you to remember the crisis that is here, that is coming and happening in unfolding before our eyes around the world. And that crisis is not a real estate default swap crisis as it was in 08, 09. This crisis this time around is dollars. It is, in fact, the monetary system. It is a fact that moment that has been kicking the can down the road, and this is the end of the road. And something has to be done in order to bring the monetary system back to a place where the world can have confidence in it and its markets. That's what we're talking about today. And until we see those digital instruments and those tokenized instruments like stable coins and value protocols with the liquidity of the financial system operating on it, I don't think we're going to have the opportunity to see XRP operating in its full scale intended use. That's why it's 62 cents. Let's get started here. First thing I want to shout out is John Deaton who came to every XRP Army soldier and our aid without having to be asked. And now he is being supported by the advocacy group Stand With Crypto. They are now endorsing John Deaton. I love it. And I'm still calling and asking all of you to politely and professionally ask Senator Lummis 
to get behind John Deaton because she was backing the candidate that he beat into the ground. October 7th, the chances of appealing the XRP lawsuit by the SEC will go out the window. However, I say don't blink, but I'm expecting an appeal. And I don't think it's bad for XRP. I think it's good if we go to the Supreme Court. That's how important it is. And we're not going to lose because they haven't lost yet. And in fact, the SEC is on a massive losing streak across the board in its crypto cases. Let's go here. Raul Powell said a while back, UK it says, starts in it. London. We'll do it. It became what's known as the euro dollar market. Listen. Which is the overseas market for dollar borrowing and lending. That becomes a, we don't know the size of it, but let's call it a $400 trillion market. <laughs> Whoa. And then the US, then we get this big breakthrough in derivatives. The US has got the Chicago Board of Trade doing futures and options and all of this stuff. But we start to figure out more complicated structures, things like swaps. And the US stops its banks doing it by its use of regulatory capital. They're like, no, 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 this is inefficient. You can't do this. The UK and Europe went, well, we're going to regulate and allow it to happen because it's big. We've seen this before. That becomes a quadrillion dollar market. Jesus. That's why every single bank from about 1985, well, particularly after the Big Bang in London, so let's call it from about 1990 to about 2008, 2010, all the major banks' largest operations were London. So Goldman Sachs' biggest operation, most profitable, London. Merrill Lynch, London. Well, Merrill Lynch is different because it was a brokerage firm. But JP Morgan, they were all London. So London, if you've been watching the news, is going to do the same thing. It's called regulatory arbitrage. London is putting together a very sensible set of crypto rules. As has Europe, as has Switzerland, as has Singapore, as has Hong Kong, as has Australia. Okay, there's its old trading group that it did with euro dollars and it did with derivatives and it did with foreign exchange, all got their regulations in place. The UK is the hub at the middle, and it will capture the lion's share. And before you know it, Coinbase, Gemini, and everybody will move to London. You know, there's a great point in that because, you know, the laggard here in the U.S. is forcing companies to go there. Not long ago, I reported how Chris Larson went to London because London is, in fact, doing exactly what Raul Powell said. They are actually uh, vetting and not vetting, but they're actually courting uh, uh, companies and players and big players in the crypto space and fintech space from Silicon Valley itself. That's why Chris Larson was there. We also heard Brad Garlinghouse recently suggest that we're not interested in IPOing in the United States, which is a great posture for the case against the SEC as well. So let's not lose sight of that. I'm sure they would love to do it here if they could get the case over. Now, all of that to say that that is a huge financial hub, the UK. And it is, and it has been for a very long time. And what did they just do? Declare Bitcoin and crypto personal property introduced in the UK Parliament. That's where that's going. Now, stay with me. All of this is being shown because you have to have this clarity, legislative clarity around the world, so then you can introduce these tokens, these stable coins of value that are representing stocks and bonds and this and that and commodities and money. And then you have the instruments that you can begin to make pairings for and bridging for XRP and make the system work even more efficiently. Because here's the great secret. Everyone says that, well, not everyone, but a lot of the naysayers say, because of the introduction of the real USD, that, that Ripple has failed with XRP. I think this is a really, really immature understanding of what's taking place. I really do. Think of this for a moment, right? Look at what introducing a stable coin has done for Bitcoin, USD Tether. It has a trillion dollar market cap. Look at what 
introducing Circle on the Ethereum network has done. And it is the largest transactions on the network, period. And it has over $300 billion market cap. But for some reason, people think that it's going to be some kind of a negative impact when it comes to XRP. But we understand that the best incentive is no incentive for XRP. Because you don't want to force people to use a system. Let me ask you a question. If you were using Google as your search engine, Google Chrome, but every time you used it, regardless of what you were looking for, they told you, you got to pay us a little something, right? You wouldn't use it. You wouldn't use it. You'd go find a free thing and use that. That's why the XRP ledger is the way it's designed. The best incentive is no incentive. Because the best incentive is understanding that I should use XRP for this specific moment, for this specific transaction, because it gives me the best result for the transaction. And it's most efficient. Otherwise, what's the point? You don't create a network to make yourself rich. That's a lot of what is going on out here. You make a network that serves a market's needs more efficiently at scale with the security. Then you have something that can go on and serve the planet as a public good, which is the XRP ledger. Not understanding this is causing a lot of people to think that the ride is over, that the mission has failed, that introducing a stable coin is because it replaces what XRP does. It is utter nonsense because they're not considering multiple factors, which in fact are. We're getting ready to experience hyperinflation. There are multiple countries around the world, over 100, that truly don't want to hold the dollar anymore and resent the fact that we've had the luxury of holding the dollar as the global reserve currency status and the benefit that it's afforded generation upon generation of people in our country. And where we're at now with the end of the road and the kicking the can because of the hyperinflation, and we know that there are over 100 nations that would love to drop the dollar simultaneously to hurt us all, something must be done. And what people are missing out here that think Ripple has failed by introducing a stable coin don't understand that the world needs a new money, and it's already proven to not be Bitcoin. The world needs a new money. More specifically, the elite, the central banks, the governments and countries need a new money. And as David Schwartz has said, they don't want to just replace an old boss with a new boss, especially when you have a chance in the technology today, I'm paraphrasing, to introduce no boss. Look, I know this is going a little long today, but let me just quickly move through this. James Wallace explains right here that the XRP ledger has been privatized for banks to use, but it's a public ledger. Listen really quickly here. Is, uh, it's going to be uh, integrated, let me say so, on the existing blockchain or uh, you guys are thinking about some outstanding system in regards of digital art? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, Listen. Uh, so basically the technology uh, that we're creating for the digital art is a, a private blockchain, but it's based on the technology used in the public blockchain. So the public blockchain that we use is called the XRP Ledger. Um, it's a uh, publicly available open source blockchain technology and what we do for each country we're working with we take a uh, we create a new private version so you can only use the blockchain if you are permissioned to do so so we've got the reason the advantage of that is the XRP ledger technology is proven it has been processing billions of transactions um, but you know central banks like to have things a little bit more private so we have created a private version. So it's a little bit of a hybrid to answer your question. But definitely it's a absolutely independent platform which is specifically performed for each project where you evaluate. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly right. There you have it. So they're all using a private version of the public good, which is the XRP ledger, which also has a decentralized exchange built into it. 
And how decentralized is that exchange if it's supposed to operate for all the world's value that's been digitized and tokenized and put on the ledger? How decentralized is that ledger if there's nothing to make any pairings for? That's why we need stable coins of all kinds, of all ilks, right? So at the end of the day, we don't have those instruments yet. So why would we see a three, four, or five digit yet? But it doesn't mean that things have failed. It means that we need to see the actual system adopt it. You know, the way the militaries and governments adopted the Internet before retail did. See, that's where this is getting twisted. People are looking at this as if it was the Internet, but it isn't. The Internet was adopted from the top down first. This has been a grassroots from the bottom up first, which is why we have one of the fewest and rarest opportunities to front run Wall Street. If you know, you know, right? But that's where we're at today. Let's keep moving very quickly. And I know this is getting a little long and I'm, I'm sorry, but Swift and Ripple could easily exist in the same space. We've heard uh, even David Schwartz say this. This system is changing. Everyone is moving towards it. James Wallace told us they're working with the Federal Reserve directly. Right here. Buys of other CBDC. So I, I do work uh, in the U.S. We, 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 we work with the Fed. And yeah, there you go. Right. And over a couple dozen other central banks, at least. And then here we see Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse, to reaffirm, are speaking with the Fed next month. Yeah. And it's recent innovation in payments. Isn't this interesting? Everybody's got a private ledger. Hmm. Well, now you wonder if the Fed and the Treasury have one with them, too. <laughs> this is going to be so fun to watch because it's a really relative question. Now, there's a lot of people out there who go, now, that's, that, is, that is irresponsible speculation. Is it? Then why is Susan Friedman at Ripple from the Treasury? Why was Craig Phillips there? Why was Michael S. Barr there, who's now at the Federal Reserve? And why is Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson speaking at the Federal Reserve? Right? Greg Kidd worked at the Federal Reserve. I think that's how they opened the door to the central banks for this technology and company. You know, these things are remarkable. Rosie Rios, the 43rd Treasurer, is a board of directors at Ripple. And, you know, and these guys just happen to be speaking at the Fed. You know why I'm not speaking at the Fed? Because I got nothing to offer, right? That's the real deal. And, you know, you don't get to knock on the door at the Fed and just walk in. I don't know if you've ever buy a Fed property, but it is covered with armed guards, right? So you're not just getting in. Now, here we have this. This is fantastic. One minute. Take a listen to this from subjective views here. He wants to, to stay on no matter what, no matter what happens in the presidential talking election. Talking about Gary Gensler. Yeah, I'm talking about Chair Gensler. You see that? that? What do you make of that? He loves the job. No, I don't think that's going to happen, um, I, especially, of course, if Donald Trump is But you don't think it would happen, it happen under a Kamala Harris I don't know. Uh, Gary Gensler's view of trying to keep control of so much about digital assets, uh, characterizing them as securities and all the companies that deal with them as securities, uh, doesn't recognize adequately that Bitcoin's a commodity, Ethereum's a commodity, and perhaps other digital assets are. We need to have a clear definition. The Howey test is available to us. Uh, and as it has been updated, there may be other assets just besides Bitcoin and Ethereum that would qualify for the jurisdiction of the Commodity Futures Trading yes, Commission. The, the rub other assets just besides Bitcoin and Ethereum that would qualify for the jurisdiction of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. The, the rub Remember that time Commissioner Pham went and visited Ripple? And Brad Garlinghouse? Yeah, I do too. I'm going to leave it right there, but take a look at this. Eggrag Crypto. Oh, this is great. You're going to love this. XRP target, 75 cents and $1. Look here. This is a fantastic post. Eggrag Crypto says, testing your patience. We're on the brink of something exciting. Until we secure a solid close above 64, 65 cent range and turn it into robust support, the next micro target is 75 cents. This level could be our launch pad for a significant surge towards $1 and beyond. Now listen to this. He says, stay, stay steady. Patience is not simply 
the ability to wait. It's how we behave while we're waiting. This dude, you know, (laughs) are you kidding me? That is badass right there, Egg Rag Crypto. That right there, uh, you know, yeah. You can't say it any better. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. That's going to do it for me. Enjoy your weekend. I'll catch all of you tomorrow.